Hi there, today we're going to be tying a quilled calabatus nymph, which is a great uh, mayfly imitation. Works really well in the uh, spring and all through summer. Basically, whenever there's a, a mayfly emergence, uh, this is a good pattern to have. So let's get started. The materials you'll need to tie this fly are Hungarian partridge in natural, ice tub pheasant tail, um, I'm using a Mustad size 12 2XL hook. You can tie them in smaller sizes like a 14 and probably right up to a 10. Um, I'm using UV. I'm using Raid Zap Thin, but you can use any type of UV that you wanted. Um, lead wire in 0 0.01. Uh, UTC Tan 70. Moose Mane Natural and Peacock Curl. So now we're going to take the peacock curl and pull out a strand or a quill and we're going to be looking for a darker quill. And the reason being is we're going to be going over light tanned thread. So we want it to make a nice contrast and have a, a darker uh, quill to um, make the, uh, the ribbing stand out. So now we're going to prepare the quill. Uh, to do this I like to use a white eraser. And I just take the white eraser, hold down the quill with my left hand finger or my index finger and just comb over the quill with the white eraser. And it just peels off all the small uh, little green uh, peacock fibers. And you'll be left with about a four inch uh, cleaned off piece of quill that's going to be used for the ribbing on your abdomen section. So as you're prepping the quills, it's always good to do maybe half a dozen of these at a time. And uh, what you'll notice is some of the quills are darker than the other ones, even though they're from the same bundle of peacock curl. Um, that's good. The lighter ones are good to put aside and use on patterns that might have darker thread. Um, I've used the lighter ones on some coronamids if I'm going over dark thread. And then you can keep your darker ones when you're going over light thread. So uh, for this pattern though, we're gonna be using the darker one. Now what you're gonna do is you're going to take your 0 0.01 lead wire and wrap it around the shank of your hook about eight or nine times and then uh, pinch off the loose ends or you can clip them off with a pair of scissors or whatever device you wanted to use and then push the lead wire towards the back part of the hook towards the bend and then you're gonna tie on your UTC, UTC 70 in tan. So now we're going to secure the wire onto the hook by doing a few loose wraps over it to get it started, going towards the back part of the hook, then towards the front, and you're just gonna build up some thread over the wire so you can start doing more firm uh, wraps around it till eventually you'll get the, all the wire covered in your thread and then you're going to build a little taper behind the wire uh, not towards the eye part but just behind it uh, just to make it a smoother transition as you um, start working your way back to where you're going to tie in your tail. For the tail I like to use moose mane in natural and I like to use the uh, the white hairs of it because at the very tip they go into this nice kind of light brown and at the very very tip of it they go into a dark brown so it makes a real nice uh, contrasting uh, color tail. So now we've selected uh, three pieces of our moose mane and uh, we're just going to adjust it so we get them in the right lengths and uh, here we can really see that change in color from that light brown towards that darker brown at the tip and now we're going to apply them onto our hook and don't worry too much about the length right now we just want to start with a few loose wraps maybe two or three loose wraps to get it started just to hold it on the hook and then we can kind of pull it back and adjust the uh, the length of the tail. A good way to uh, double check your tail length is to take your scissors and just lift up the uh, the tail pieces behind the shank of the hook and they'll kind of open up in three and then if you need to make any fine tuning, you can either grab each strand or grab all three and just kind of pull them to the length that you want. Um, I like to run a longer tail with these uh, mayfly nymph patterns. I think they, uh, they're very attractive to the fish to have the longer tail length like that. Um, 
but I won't, uh, if I'm tying them for the river or something, I'll keep them at a shorter length. But uh, for the steel water ones, definitely I like to run the, the longer tail lengths for the mayfly patterns. And now you can take your scissors and trim off the long length of your moose mane. And when you trim it, you want to trim it just behind the, uh, the buildup that you did with the thread over the lead wire. So now you're going to take your thread and just start building a nice taper from the lead wire all the way back to the tail. And now we're going to apply our peacock quill. And when we're applying our peacock quill, it's important that we, um, we pick which side we want to use. One side of the quill will have a dark kind of brownish uh, stripe running down it. And the other side will have two thin stripes, one on each, uh, two thin black stripes, one on each side. And um, for this pattern, I like to use the one that has the kind of dark black and it moves over towards the uh, kind of the chocolate brown color. You can use the other side, it's whichever one uh, side you prefer. But for this one, I find because we're going to use the tan uh, thread underneath it kind of as a counter rib, um, the, the dark, the dark one with the uh, just the one black thick stripe seems to uh, to hold up and show up better. So now we're going to tie in our peacock quill and when you're tying this in you want the uh, the side of the quill that you don't want to see on your rib is the side that you want face up facing towards you because um, when you, after you tie it in when you flip it over you'll have the side that uh, the desired side and then you can start um, wrapping that part up towards the eye of your hook. And when you're doing this, what you want to do is just leave a little bit of a space um, of tan showing, just a slight little bit. And this makes a nice counter rib um, that you see in the naturals. Once you've wrapped your quill up to, let's say, just over a little bit over the um, wire part, you're then going to do a couple wraps on it and a couple wraps over it to secure it and then cut off the excess. And now we're going to add the UV resin to the abdomen section of our fly and it's just easier to do at this stage so you don't have legs and pieces of ice dub that might get caught in your UV resin. And now you're going to cure your fly with your UV light Give it a good five to 10 second cure. Should be more than sufficient. Then you're gonna take your pheasant tail and you're gonna pull out about eight to 12 fibers. Pull them at about a 90 degree angle with the stem and then cut them off. Now you're gonna bring your thread back and put a few wraps over the part, the wire portion, and tie in your pheasant tail with your tips facing towards the eye of the hook. Now you're going to trim off the pheasant tail tips and apply some UV eye stub in pheasant tail and just enough to cover your thread and start building up your thorax section of your fly. Now we're going to start prepping the Hungarian partridge uh, feather in natural and we're going to pull up the Kind of the tip fibers straight and the kind of the long softer ones we're going to pull back towards the thumb peeling them off so we're just left with the kind of speckled part that's separated there in the pick. The next step is we're going to pull back some more of the longer fibers back and just leave a few of those short fibers at the top there. Then we're going to trim off those tip fibers so we're left with just a V shape and the uh, feathers on each side of that V are what's going to form your legs. Now this part requires a bit of finesse. You're going to take the V shape and pull down your legs on each side of your fly and do two possibly three light wraps over the partridge feather just to get the legs in place. At this step you can fine-tune your legs and adjust the length by pulling on the stem of the partridge feather. Uh, just one thing is to make sure the stem lines up parallel with the shank 
That way you're not, um, you don't have a side of legs that's longer than the other side. Once you're happy with your legs, you can do a couple wraps to secure it on the feather, and then a few wraps, say two or three in front of the feather, and pull the feather back, and then trim it off. Now we're just gonna take a little bit more of your ice stub and pheasant tail, just uh, maybe an inch or so, just enough to cover the thread, and wrap it around just to balance out the abdomen and the head part of the fly. Now you're gonna take your pheasant tail and pull it forward, forming your wing case. Then you're going to do a few wraps on it and a few wraps in front of it and secure it and then cut off the excess pheasant tail. Now you're gonna take a brown Sharpie and just color that tan thread brown and perform a five turn whip finish to complete the tying portion of your fly. And lastly, we are going to take some UV resin and just go over the top of our wing case, um, solidifying the wing case and a little bit on the head uh, just to strengthen the whip finish. And your quilled calabatus nymph is complete. It's a really uh, great still water pattern. I think it really shines in the months of uh, May and June. Um, especially June and uh, hopefully it uh, picks up some fish for you and you get some good results and thank you very much for watching.